Hi everybody, it's Storytellers of Mallorca. Welcome to this week's edition. We've got a very special guest with us today. It's me! Um, a lot of the guests have been saying, well, Jamie, come on, you should be um, telling us and, and sharing a bit about your story and what brought you to Mallorca and the trials and tribulations that, uh, that you have had. So I thought, well, okay, yeah, let, let's have a look at that. We can do that. So um, before we start, I'd like to thank Cher, um, who has been doing my website for me at webdesignshare.com. I'll put that uh, in the links down below. If you have a look at there, and thank you so much for, for all the help uh, with, the, with the website. So thank you. Um, originally, I uh, came to Mallorca probably about 25 years ago, 26 years ago, and didn't end up uh, settling here at that time. Um, <clears throat> We ended up moving back to uh, back to New Zealand uh, and set up a health retreat in the Coromandel Peninsula um, called Vida, Vida Health Retreat. Uh, we're in 80 acres there, it was a beautiful property, a lovely retreat, um, but uh, it, uh, things happen in life and things changed and uh, I ended up um, moving back over this, this neck of the woods. And I was, uh, when the health retreat sold, I uh, ran away to sea, pretty much literally, as it were. And uh, I got into my diving, I'm big into scuba diving, and I've surfed and, and been surf life saving and, and raced yachts, um, then lots of different things. And I virtually ran away to sea diving some of the, the spectacular spots around, the, around the, the Southern Hemisphere and Fiji and swimming with the humpback whales and Tonga. Um, diving off Great Barrier Reef uh, and uh, some of the wonderful dive sites around the north of New Zealand as well. And uh, when I was, I think I was in Tonga at the time and I saw an advert for the UKSA which is a sailing academy in the Isle of Wight um, and I made some inquiries and ended up going over there because I'd been on boats so often and I'd been in search and rescue for so long um, I just needed a few deep sea miles, which, um, which wasn't a problem. So I did my, my zero to hero course in the Isle of Wight. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, in the, as I was finishing, I went up to Leyland, just north of Manchester, and bought a camper van. Um, drove that down to the Isle of Wight and then drove that down through, uh, through Europe, through France, uh, through to Spain and uh, through to here in Mallorca. Um, I'd uh, seen a lot of the campsites around Spain and they're just some of them are beautiful in France as well, beautiful campsites. But I didn't really do my homework well enough um, for campsites in Mallorca and they have none. Um, it's monopolized by the hotels and things here so there's, there's virtually no camping although now I think there's one place or two places that, that you can you know, pull up a camper van. So I arrived here and uh, I had uh, been in the health and wellness industry for, oof, at that stage, yeah, 30, 35 years on and off from having my own gym, having the retreat, uh, doing lots of other studies in that as well, and holistic animal therapy, um, and it was quite diverse. And I think I, I burned myself out because I was working with a lot of clients at the retreat. So um, I, I wanted a break, so I uh, got a job where I arrived uh, two days before the Palmer Boat Show started here and uh, went in and then within a day I, I had work, I had a job um, and the, the way it sort of worked out here. And I had my, virtually my sabbatical in the yachting industry. Um, it's quite an interesting industry and that's an, uh, for another, another day uh, to talk to get into that a bit more. Um, but I did that for, goodness, it was um, 12, 13 years, I think it was, in the, in the super yacht industry. And then when the COVID uh, thing came along, I got called back into service and uh, got back into my therapies, um, did some retraining and uh, uh, did a course with uh, a man called Alberto Vialdo in the Four Winds Society um, and did a lot of the, and I just resonated with the man and, and the teachers and the courses. And it integrated pretty much all my 40 odd years of, of natural therapies and natural healings. And, and it still does, the work that I'm doing now is still part of that. So it's not just the shamanic work, it's not just the, 
it's, um, the uh, working on the chakras and the energy side, but you're yeah, working with crystals, which I trained in, homeopathy, which I trained in, herbal medicine, which I trained in, um, hands-on energy work as well. So it sort of encompassed it all. Um, also, I, I trained in Los Angeles, Canada, and London as a, a clinical hypnotherapist, psychotherapist. So it really it brings everything together in one sort of modality, and I offer that now with clients. And the clients are seeing some amazing results, and I, I help them to, to help themselves, really. And the, the, the benefits... Uh, and the way that they're changing their lives is, is wonderful, it really is. Um, and, you know, with the shamanic work, we, we say that all we are really is, a, is like a hollow bone, a flute. And the energy, the, the, uh, the channeling, everything comes through us and then we pass it on um, to the people that, that are working with us for them to be aware, um, really, of who and what they are and then they can start to help themselves. So that's what I've been doing here. So the, the yacht that I was on sold, uh, and then um, with this uh, COVID thing going on, it turned out uh, to be a blessing in disguise in a way, because then I started to get back into the, into the therapy and the energy work and the shamanic work. Um, I've been here now on the island where our daughter's 12 this year. So we've been here a few years before that. So probably about 13, 14, maybe 15 years altogether. Uh, as I said, I traveled down from London um, through to here and lived pretty much around the southwest side of, of Mallorca. And it's a beautiful, beautiful area. It, it really is. Um, and when, when I was looking, when I finished my courses around the UK, say the, the possibilities were really for me at that stage of two choices and that was either to go to Antibes in the south of France or to come here to Palm de Mallorca. Um, Antibes, um, I heard, was, was quite an expensive uh, town to be in um, so that's why I decided to come to Mallorca and uh, it has been, it has been you know, a, a good choice, it's been a wonderful place to, to live and to be. Um, just looking at the, the questions as I go by that I ask other people. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm from New Zealand, did my times, I've lived in different places around the world. I lived in Los Angeles, I uh, lived uh, and stayed around, or more stayed than, than lived around uh, New Jersey and New York. Uh, up in Canada, near Alberta, up around there, London, um, and uh, a number of places, back to New Zealand. But Europe has always sort of pulled me back over this way, so it has been a, it's been a uh, like a magnet pulling me, pulling me back. So uh, this is certainly where you know we want to be, where we are as a family. Um, this is where we want to stay for the, certainly for the time being, anyway. Um, my greatest struggle, well, I suppose, when you when you're working in different areas. Uh, especially in the, in the holistic side, in the spiritual side. Mallorca has um, a lot of ley lines going through it. It has a lot of energy centers in and around the island. And uh, if you come here with any problems that you need to work on, I find that those energies, those feelings are, are amplified. You know, they, they are increased so much um, that you have to work on them. You have to deal you know, with that. That you're, that you're going through. And then when you peel that bit of the onion off, that you come to the next layer and the next layer. So Mallorca, uh, and probably Pachamama Mother Earth as well at the moment, was helping to clear a lot of the, um, a lot of the negativity, a lot of the, the, uh, the energies and entities um, that have been hanging around for generations really from my DNA coming down into, into the, the, the life that I've chosen before I arrived and going back through past lives as well. So um, all that was, was looked at from there. So that's probably some of the, the biggest struggles is, is, is going through um, some of these life lessons, some of the things that, we've been, that I've been going through and, uh, and working with that. Um, but I found a, a lot of solace, a lot of peace, continuing with my meditation. I've meditated for virtually most, well, I don't remember when I first started, but I was very, very young. 
um, with meditation. <clears throat> Exercise is always good. Yoga has always helped me. And with the, with the sea here in Mallorca, uh, all, all year, I swim all year. Um, the winter, I mean, it's the, the, um, I joke with friends that the, uh, the temperature of the sea here in the winter is probably the, uh, the temperature of the warmth of the sea in the summertime in New Zealand. So uh, it's no major problem, you know, swimming all year round here, and it's a lovely place. Um, the other question, the, what time, you know, a time when I, when I didn't want to be here. Um, I don't really think that happened. There, there's been a couple of situations where I thought I might have to move out. Um, but um, when I, you know, had sat down and had uh, good talks, good discussions with my, with my wife, uh, and my family as well. We we looked around, and um, uh, moving back to New Zealand just wasn't an option. Although I love to go back and visit and, and reconnect, and looked at different parts around Europe, and there's nothing really that offers what we are offered here. Uh, so there wasn't. Although we we looked at it, there was no other place that that um, offered everything that you know that Mallorca has here. Um, for a piece of advice for people wanting to be here, I mean, it's a beautiful island. Yes, we have uh, a lot of sunny days in the middle of summer, end of July, August. It gets really hot when, uh, when Nicole was born. It was up to 45, 46 degrees here. Madrid was a heck of a lot hotter. So you have to be aware of that. And I know a number of people do go back to different parts of Europe to, uh, you know, for those months if they can. But you, know, you, you adjust and you get used, and you get used to it. Um, the winter months here, yeah, we've had snow on the mountains before. We've had snow down onto the beaches um, and on the yachts and that as well. In fact, that was the, 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 the winter before my daughter was born. So we had the really, you know, the cold winter and then we had the hot summer. But generally it's mild mild here we get a bit of snow on the hills like we did this winter and then the summer before it got into 41s 42s um, and it's hot that's but a bit it's bearable and I, I'm a, a heat person so um, um, I, I, I live with that the other areas here is when you become a resident as, as we have um, then you have to go through the, the process uh, of doing that and that takes a little bit to uh, to get your head around and get used to, and I, and I have said it on a couple of different um, interviews as well, is that you have to realise that it's a manana mentality here, in that if you come in with some papers into government office, you may have to wait an hour, hour and a half, um, sometimes, sometimes longer, sometimes it's a bit shorter, and there may not be something correct, then you have to go away and come back again, or go away and come back again, and go away and come back again. And uh, we did that ourselves. Uh, my wife was um, so patient going through that. It was so wonderful. Um, but we did that ourselves. But there are companies now, and in <clears throat> many of the languages, um, with the people that are living here, and they will do that for you. Yes, you pay them a fee, <clears throat> but it saves you um, having to, to wait in line, um, all the, the translations and the confusion that can go with that. So <clears throat> my advice would be to, to employ one of the, the, the specialty um, people offering these services and it just makes a, um, a, a big difference. If you're looking to come here, I would say come and stay and come and you know, rent somewhere for, for a little while. See what it's like. See whether it's what you want to do. Um, I mean, the Spanish language, you know, we have to, to learn, and I, I, I get by. I could be a lot more proficient, but um, I do get by, so it's not as bad as as uh, as it can be. But the yachting industry is very English orientated, of course. So, you know, it it is easy to to get by with English, and and most, especially the young ones, all speak English uh, now as well. So that's here. The markets, we have some wonderful markets here. Food prices, like all, all around the world, the food prices are going up. The quality is, is, uh, is debatable, questionable. Um, but there is everything here for the price range that you want. If you're wanting um, high-end products, then those are available. If you're wanting to, to um, exist uh, on, a, on, a, on a budget, you can do that as well. And you can, you can do that quite easily. Uh, and then your spare time, 
and of course for most people here is into the outdoors so there's all the water sports um, everything from yachting to jet skis to um, wakeboarding and all the latest trends surfing um, yes Mediterranean does have uh, uh, has some good surf here as well around the islands friends are, are still surfing and things and they they go out a lot um, and uh, then you've got the land you've got the hiking you've got the cycling which is big here as well uh, and a lot of festivities festivals um, uh, fiestas and things going on so there is a lot on offer here and whether you want to be near the sea or whether you are happy to be in a in a, in a beautiful little village and living in that sort of lifestyle then that's all available for you um, the next question I'm sort of asking myself this is quite fun I hope you're enjoying it if you haven't turned or or turned off just yet um, what do you do I yeah well I'm a shamanic energy medicine practitioner but also a, a spiritual life coach as well so helping people um, adjusting with sp these these changing times that we're going through and uh, a lot of them are, are confused a lot of a lot of people are find a um, um, going to substances to ease their their, their troubles um, and uh, and they, they're numbing themselves with either alcohol or recreational drugs and that's not just here but that's that's all around the world so you know when I'm doing the lifestyle work with them we're looking at all areas of their lives mentally physically emotionally spiritually um, so it's a it's a it's a whole uh, holistic side that we're looking at and then the spiritual side is how deep that they want to go and that's starting with the breathing exercises just give me three breaths let's just um, um, start meditation with uh, one minute into three minutes into five minutes and whatever is comfortable and and people say well you know I, I can't meditate I, I have trouble and I thought well, yeah that's okay that's good because that's your inner conscious mind that's your subconscious mind communicating with you and you just have to bring yourself back to now back to yourself back to this present moment back to your breathing back to feeling the breath coming in and out of your nostrils your, your tummy um, contracting and expanding with each breath and then start again and then because it's a practice you know you, you never you never have it um, under total control uh, I think um, you have to keep practicing and practice does make you stronger uh, makes the, the meditation uh, deeper and I know that you know if I'm doing my morning meditations I'm probably the biggest ones that I do they can be although they can be as short as 30 minutes they can be up to an hour even to an hour and a half when I really get into a meditation and my morning meditations uh, do a lot of clearing work a lot of work on, on my energy centers um, and that's why it's longer I do healings group healings in that time and healings with my family and, and properties um, and then my lunchtime one if I have the opportunity to do that then that is a lot quieter and like you know 20 minutes maybe 25 minutes then when it comes to my in evening meditation then as long as I can get in 10 minutes as long as I can do a 10 minute meditation that will just help me to sleep um, soundly through the night uh, and if I miss it then I know that um, you know then my sleep is sort of interrupted as we go along so the different meditations for the different times of the day um, but it is a it is a big area and I help people with that and then um, working with them what's going on in their lives whether it's to do with finances relationships um, to do with uh, um, any other career problems or choices things like that then we break that down and have a look at that but we start with a, the individual start with you the person and then we work our way um, out from there because once you've started and you heal yourself then that's one less person in the world that you have to worry about and then the energy that you share moves out from you into your immediate circle whether it's family friends or co-workers and then moves out a bit more and a bit more and then people see what's happening to you and then they start to say you know well, that you know you're looking greater how can I get some of that uh, and then that's how we move on
uh, and that's how we help others to move on and especially where we need to at this time it's like a, a compulsory thing that we need to become more spiritual we need to become our own shamanic energy medicine practitioners for ourselves and the community and the, and the environment around us and that's that's really important um, the moment I, I knew that I wanted to live here well I think being drawn back here for the second time for the, with the yachting was a big part and then being here and being part of the lifestyle and it, it just feels home and I know when I was on the yachts and um, I'd come back around the corner into the Bay of Palma. The Bay of Palma is, is quite a big bay. Either I'm coming from the from the east or coming from the west and would come through and the, and the, the yacht was berthed in Porta Portals and it has a beautiful like a watchtower, clock tower in it there and I knew every time I came around the corner and I picked up the binoculars, spotted that and it just had that feeling, oh yeah, I'm home, I'm home, that's that, that, that feeling there, I'm home to, to not only New Yorker but to my family and my friends and that here as well and you know making friends is, is not so hard here, um, yes yeah, sure you, people will always sort of keep an, an eye open about what's going on around themselves but once you do start to make friends then it's easy to, for that to continue and to carry on um, and, uh, and they're all languages here, really are and uh, there's some wonderful people here and they help each other and there's, there's things on uh, like WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups all helping people to help each other you know, with queries or questions or anything else that could be happening in their lives. So, you know, it really is a, a big community here. Uh, and it's, it's like the friends, you may not see somebody for 12 months, but then you'll see them again and it's like nothing had, had changed. You know, you, as if you saw them two days ago sort of thing. So that's lovely. That's really nice. Uh, what do I love about living here? Yeah, pretty much the sunshine, the sea is the biggest one, uh, and my family as well. You know, we spend a lot of time at the beach, swimming. Um, the food's pretty good here. You know, we, we, we do our best with that. But it's the outdoor activities. As my daughter's getting older now, she's connecting with her friends, going out a lot more. Uh, and pretty much, you know, the beaches involve one way or another. So you know, the beaches do play a big part here and getting out onto the, onto the water, onto the ocean as well, whether it's with stand-up paddles or with yachts or, or whatever. So, um, you know, it's, it is a, it's a lovely lifestyle here. And if you're thinking of moving somewhere, then certainly, you know, have a look here. Um, anything else I'd like to share? No, I'd just really like to thank you all for, for coming on and listening to the podcast. Um, and my details will be down, down below there. But, um, you know, the, this, this podcast, The Storytellers of Mallorca, is the opportunity for people out there who are living here to come and tell their stories. You know, you've seen before, we've had the, 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 the single mum coming on here. We've had um, people from different walks of life. Or, you know, a lady that was here, um, Beverly, she's been here for over 60 years. You know, she's seen so many changes and all the different other people in between that. And it's worth, you know, uh, worth looking at. And so please, you know, like and share and comment down below. You know, the algorithms have changed again. Um, so if you could do that and, and, uh, and spread the word. And listen, if you'd like to, if you're living here in, in New York and you'd like to share your story, because I've had a couple of people come up and say, well, I like, I've got a good story too. I like to share that. Then yeah, please, please contact me and let's have a look at it. And one last thing, or almost last thing, um, if you want to see your name down the bottom or around the top here, yes, I'm looking for sponsors. I've been doing all this by myself, this one and the Becoming podcast. Um, I've had help you know, with the editing and filming with, with that with, um, with Cam, um, but he's, he's uh, busy now with his, um, with his education and studies and things, so um, that's okay. Um, but you know, if you'd like to have your name and be a part of this and to support not only this podcast, but the Becoming podcast as well, then I'd love to hear from you. So, and a big thanks to Share at uh, webdesignshare.com for all your help. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I look forward to catching up with all you guys soon. In Moonai, Namaste, Aho. Bye for now.